The Break Room Romance Mr. Conrad Davis was once again getting on my nerves. I knew that he had my best interest in mind. After all, he just wanted the best for Davis Enterprises and is one of the promising and rising young managerial staff. I was bound to have a lot of pressure put on me, but his incessant rambling could get too much at times and so I did what I had been doing for the past couple of months that I have been here. I went to the break room in the basement of the building to take a breather. It was almost always secluded and nobody really hung out there so it was perfect for me time. That fateful Tuesday however, as I entered the room to make myself a cup of Earl Grey tea, I spotted an unfamiliar silhouette seated on one of the chairs. Relishing a cup of warm coffee, I hesitated to enter, not wanting to disturb his alone time. But there was something magnetic about this man. He seemed so at peace to the point that it was contagious. He looked up, spotting me, and shyly smiled. I smiled back before making my tea. Afterward, I sat across from him. It was not usual of me to make first moves or be amiable to my office mates, but something propelled me to befriend him. You're new here, I questioned. He nodded and extended his hand. And will cook. I work in accounting. He introduced himself. As expected, his voice matched his aura. It was gentle and comforting. Elijah, I replied. That exchange was the start of our daily routine of meeting at the break room. Amidst the hustle and bustle of work, I found solace in Will's presence. It seemed that no matter how hectic the day was, he always had a smile etched on his face. Over the course of the next few days, I found out that he was an extremely well-read guy who enjoyed a good classic book just like I did. We also had other common interests such as writing poems and painting. It was lovely sharing parts of me that I was able to exhibit at work. In Davis Enterprises, I felt like I was a robot. My work was mechanical and boring until Will came along. Moreover, Will was a massive hugger and I was the complete contrast. I avoided physical contact with other people most of the time which was why I had the reputation of being rather cold and distant, physically and literally. But then as our dynamic developed, he started giving me bear hugs when he had to run out of the break room and back to his desk job. At first, I was taken aback, but I quickly found a new kind of comfort in the said gesture. I, of course, started returning his tight hugs. They were usually the highlight of my day until he started bringing dishes that he cooked for me to try. Here, I brought some stew for you, said Will one time during our routine break room meetup. I've been testing out the recipe for the past few nights and trying to get it perfect. I remember him asking me about my favorite dish just a few days ago, and now, he cooked me some. It never failed to amaze me how thoughtful he was. It's the best stew I've ever had in my entire life. I complimented as I went in for yet another bite. Will laughed, his adorable dimples showing. Are you only saying that so I will cook more for you in the coming weeks? He joked as he proceeded to taste his dish. I giggled and shook my head. I appreciate your gesture, Will. I really do. Thank you for being the kindest to me, I replied genuinely. He simply grinned while swallowing his food. I gestured to the sides of his mouth where some sauce lingered. He wiped some of it off, but did not get it also in the spur of the moment. I leaned in and wiped it for him which made him blush profusely. Thanks, L, he muttered timidly. Would you like us some stew? I could make you a hot cup right now. He stuttered this as he headed towards the coffee machine, clearly flustered and shy from our interactions. Stew, I repeated, suppressing a smile. He shook his head swiftly and facepalmed which I found to be beyond adorable. Coffee, I meant would you like a cup of coffee? He corrected his blunder. I chuckled at the sight of him all worked up like that. Quit making fun of me. Now with that grin on your face, I will surely keep messing up my sentences. You make me nervous, Will confessed. I just kept the Cheshire smile on my face and he evidently felt it while making his coffee because he kept fumbling around, knocking the sugar container, and spilling a bit of the milk. Elijah, he called out again. I said stop smiling at me like that. I can't stop messing up when you're looking at me like that. With this, I came over and pinched his cheeks to which he turned even more red. I could not help but feel light whenever he was around as though he was a ray of sunshine in my cloudy life. It seemed like Will had that effect on me and I could not be more grateful. A week later, we were in the break room as usual. This time around, we were sitting side by side on the couch, browsing through a first edition classic that I had brought to work with me that day to show Will. We were examining it while I sipped on my tea, and Will on his coffee when an elderly lady, whom I quickly recognized to be one of the cleaners assigned to the lower floors of the Davis Enterprises buildings, barged in. She also recognized me immediately and for a split second, I was under the impression that she was going to mention my father. Thankfully, she did not. Oh, Sir Elijah, I didn't know you were here, she noted. And with your partner, I suppose. Look at you too. 
You look amazing together if I do say so myself. Oh no, we're not a seawill was about to say. But then I intervened. Why thank you, Claire, I replied to the cleaner. After she finished cleaning the small break room, Will hit me on the shoulder playfully. As usual, he blushed at Claire's blunder of us being a couple. I was not going to lie. I kind of liked it. Why did you say that? You've deceived the old woman. He berated. I simply laughed and put my arm around his shoulder. Loosen up, Will, I said as I tapped on his nose playfully, making him crack a smile. It made her happy. And honestly, it made me happy too. Upon hearing that, Will looked up at me and it was then I noticed how close we were. I could hear his shallow breathing and I was certain he could feel the warmth of my breath too. Hesitantly at first, we both leaned in and shared one small, lingering kiss. It felt electric, but it was not enough and we both knew it as soon as we opened our eyes and met each other's gaze. This time around, braver, we devoured the lips of each other and kissed hungrily. What do you say about making Claire's comment true? I asked flirtatiously. To my surprise, the usual timid will pulled me by my tie and leaned in for another passionate peck. I'm down. From then on, we were inseparable. Not only did we spend our snack break together, but we also started wolfing down our packed lunches in the break room. Thankfully, no one had ever spotted us and suspiciously eyed us. For them, it was just two co-workers enjoying their lunches over small talk. When they were not around, However, Will would whisper in his hoarse and shy voice, kiss me. When we were not making love there, trying every position there could possibly be, we were cuddled up in the couch, just enjoying each other's presence. We at times read together, taking turns to read the text while the other person closed their eyes and played with the other one's hair or ran their hand lovingly along their arm. One afternoon, we had just finished having our daily tea and coffee when Will, much to my surprise, started trailing kisses all over my face with wet, sloppy kisses until our lips finally met. That told me he was in the mood. Our kisses were just getting heavy when a large, looming figure appeared at the door. I swiftly pulled away after realizing we got carried away in the heat of the moment to close the door and lock it. Standing there was the notorious Conrad Davis himself, the chief executive officer of Davis Enterprises and my father, Elijah Davis. Stop this at once. His voice boomed. You, get away from my son, you sick gay bastard. Will was appalled upon hearing this. I never once mentioned to him that I was heir to the Davis Enterprises and now, it had come back to bite me in the ass. You've probably deceived my dear Elijah into these sinful acts you are committing. How dare you do this in my office after I have entrusted you to do wonderful things in your accounting department. He scolded Will, pointing a finger at his face. At this point, I stepped in between the two of them as though in a motion to defend Will. Dad, stop. I love Will and he loves me. No one was deceived. This was purely by choice, I explained. That made my dad even more furious and the rage was etched all over his face. And that makes it even worse. You are disappointing, Elijah Davis. I want to see you up in my office immediately. We will talk without this scum lover of yours. He reprimanded before walking out and slamming the door of the break room. Will, I can explain please, I begged as Will made a motion to leave. I think your dad has done enough explaining. Elijah, you've seen the damage we have done already and this would just be the tip of the iceberg if everyone else found out. You heard him. Go, Will whispered. A few days after the confrontation with my father, I had not talked to Will or even seen him. I also decided not to wander to the break room as I planned my next move. I got an earful from both of my parents that day and I made a deal with my father that Will will be left untouched as long as I kept my distance. I just needed time for my father's anger to cool off before I can figure out another way to spend time with Will. That day, I finally saw him after a few days. It turned out that he had been absent from work, calling in sick according to one of the staff in accounting named Mariah. I knew better though. The revelation and confrontation probably got the better of him. I spotted him in his usual desk, looking paler than usual and I wanted to reach out for him and give him the tightest of hugs. On the days that I had been feeling hopeless and pressured by my father's expectations, Will was there for me. Nothing broke my heart more than seeing him miserable because of my own doing and not being able to act upon it. We went about our lives like that for the next couple of days. The only thing I could do was steal glances at him and hoping he could understand my predicament. My half-sister, Allison Davis Archibald, also visited me that week. She took one glance at my appearance and knew that I was under the weather. My baby brother. She greeted me. It also took me by surprise because I had been spying on Will from afar at that moment. Why do you look so sad? Allison asked. I'm okay, Allie. I assured her, but she insisted on giving me a peck on the cheek and ruffling my hair. While I was generally aloof and did not want any contact with other people usually, my sister was an exception. 
That was why we were often mistaken as a couple by people who did not know our relationship. She was practically the only one who can boss me around and be affectionate with me. I saw Will glancing at us, but as soon as I met his eye, he swiftly looked away. Little did I know that that would be the last of him that I would see in a while. The next week, I kept waiting for Will to arrive on his desk so I could watch him from afar and see how he was doing, but he never showed up. That was when I decided to go down to the break room where surprisingly, Claire already was there, sipping a cup of coffee. Hey, Claire, I greeted her. Hi, honey, you okay? She asked. I looked at her, perplexed. I'm okay, I assured her. Have you seen Will, my boyfriend? She shot a small smile at me, as though she wanted to say that she knew my predicament. He said his goodbyes to me a few days ago. I didn't really understand why he was terminate. Wait, what? I cut her off. He was fired, hun. He didn't say why and I even asked him if Mr. Elijah could bring this up to his father so they can remedy it. But he said you two were over and you've even got a girl visiting you here in the office, getting all touchy. I shook my head vehemently. Oh no, 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 no. He's got it all wrong. That was Ali, my sister. And he got fired, damn it. I should have known dad wouldn't keep to his word. I cursed. In the coming days, I made sure to rectify my father's mistake and set things straight once and for all. I endured enough under his wrath and I was tired of being pushed around. But my freedom was not the only thing I was fighting for. Most importantly, it was Will who had gotten the shorter end of the stick. I had Mariah text Will so he could sit in today's board meeting. As expected, my father was alarmed by Will's presence as soon as the latter stepped into the room. But he regained his composure and bit his tongue as the other shareholders were present after all. He could not make a scene here even if he wanted to. Unbeknownst to him, I had already approached my grandfather, Franklin Davis, who also happened to be the chairman of the board of directors. Last night, I requested an audience with my grandpa and exposed to him my father's deep-rooted homophobia towards me and how when I finally found love in Will, Conrad made sure to eliminate him in the picture by firing him. My grandfather was one of the most sympathetic and understand people I had ever known. Not only did he advocate for equal rights of all, but he also supported me in exploring my sexuality. I think that was a massive part of why Davis Enterprises had been so successful over the past years. My grandpa was not only business savvy, but he was a compassionate and accepting leader who did not shun differences, but embraced them. The meeting commenced and instead of some of the higher ranking managers taking the floor, it was my grandpa who made the first speech. As you have seen, we are joined today by Mr. Will Cook, one of our former accounting associates who until very recently had been excelling at his job. Welcome back. Will, Grandpa Franklin greeted him. Before our agenda for today formally starts, I would like to raise a concern brought up by one of our sales managers. Mr. Elijah Davis. Elijah, as you know, is not only an extremely competent executive, but also my dearest, loving grandson. Yesterday, he approached me with an issue that I was aghast to hear about. His own father, Conrad Davis, has apparently been exercising his influence to ensure that Elijah cuts off connections with Mr. Will Cook here who happened to be his ex-boyfriend. Conrad's motives, I was told, was homophobia, and in general, he just likes to abuse the power he has on his own son which is unacceptable. Upon hearing this, the room was filled with chatter from horrified board of directors. My father seemed frightened, knowing that these higher-ups always stood for what was right. I bet he never even imagined that I would stand up to him and expose the injustice to my grandfather. Will was completely teary-eyed and he was gazing at me, as though beaming with delight and gratitude. On behalf of Davis Enterprise, I would like to preface that we do not condone such behavior of discrimination and abuse of power certainly not against our own employees or anyone in fact. With this, I would like to formally offer Mr. Will Cook his position back and to compensate. I am offering to promote him to fill in the newly vacated position of senior accounting executive. I have reviewed his credentials thoroughly and even spoke with his former colleague, Ms. Mariah Sanchez, and I am certain he would make a great executive should he accept the position. Will looked over the moon as he thanked my grandfather profusely. I accept, sir. That's settled then, my grandpa Franklin said. My father looked completely outraged at this point, especially since the board of directors were still shooting him with glares and clearly disproved of his prejudiced actions against me and Will. However, there shall be no special treatment here. As I mentioned, Davis Enterprise does not, 
in any way or form, condone such discrimination and cruelty. With this, I would like to request Mr. Conrad Davis to step down as the CEO and temporarily be relocated to instead be the manager of a smaller branch of Davis. This is effective immediately. My father stormed off the boardroom after hearing this, not uttering another word. Grandpa truly was ruthless and he always did what was right, even if it hurt his own son. After all, it was my father's mistake and he just got what he deserved. After the meeting, I purposely stalled until it was only me and Will in that room. He approached me shyly and I smiled at the sight. Thank you, Will, he said as he took my hands in his. For everything, I'm sorry. I should have acted upon it earlier, but I was too scared. But I assure you, if you give me another chance, I will fight for you, I replied sincerely. You don't have to. I can fight for myself. But yes, I will give you another chance. Claire also told me. About your sister, Will revealed. I'm sorry I assumed that you were with another girl so soon after we broke up. I had to keep my distance. And yes, that girl you spotted me with was my sister. I assured him. And I'm sorry for not telling you about my identity earlier. I should not have kept it from you. You deserve to know. But I was just scared that you'll treat me differently if you knew. But then again, you're much too kind. I know that regardless of who I was, you'd be the same, sweet Will. He nodded in affirmation. I don't care who you are. If you are the heir to the Davis Enterprise, then so be it. I love you for you. With that, we shared a gentle kiss. After, hand in hand and unashamed of our relationship, we headed for the break room. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become a part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.